application. I think it's unacceptable to take over three years for anything, any application in this county to take over three years to move through the process. To me, that's not serving the taxpayers of this county well, no matter what side you, of the fence you stand on. Supervisor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, to Supervisor Pinch's comments, I think it's important that the record states, as, as I believe I heard the CEO say, that there are a number of, of, of key documents that have not been received by the applicant. And so the, the process is not being held up by the county, and I think that's a very important point to make. If there are documents that, that haven't been produced by the applicant, then so be it, and the process moves forward as, as quickly as it can. We would all like it to go faster like we would like most aspects of government to go faster, but here we are, and I and I don't think we need to be pointing the finger at anyone. Thank you, Supervisor Delmar. Yeah, I can't stay out of this one. If a person were to look at the record, Supervisor, you would find out that it's been the consultant and it's been our process that has held this project up the bulk of the time. If one was to actually look at the record, so it's not necessarily the applicant's fault. And it's indicative of many projects before this county where they, they linger and they linger and they linger and they get postponed and delayed due to bureaucracies and consultants. So I concur with Supervisor Pinches, enough is enough of this stuff. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, Delbar. Delbar. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, uh, Supervisor Pinchy, you had a quick comment on five, and that's, we have yeah. several time dynamics. Thank you, I'm Mr. Chairman. Move. As you know, the uh, Harwood uh, Mill in Branscom is uh, actually on schedule to be auctioned off by Wells Fargo Bank on the 18th and 19th of November. Uh, and this letter attached is, uh, I certainly support this letter, it's just to let uh, Wells Fargo is in control of the mill and property at this time now because of the uh, transfer in uh, uh, bankruptcy and which allows them to liquidate the assets. Uh, it's an extreme important issue for the four county region. Uh, we are going to have a meeting here, an informal meeting here Thursday evening here in this building at 630 to talk about a strategy of maybe at the last ditch effort we can uh, mm -hmm. be able to save the uh, the mill to, from going to be cut up into uh, salvage. So uh, if, if you know anybody that's interested and has a desire to show up, there'll be a lot of uh, large timberland owners, small timberland owners, uh, existing mill operators come together. It's just an informal discussion to see if we can create a uh, uh, maybe maybe be able to save that mill because I feel that once that goes out of production and is cut up we'll, we've lost that not only have we lost the facility which dire need in this area and the jobs but we've lost the market for our Douglas fir in a four county region so it's an extremely big issue as far as economic development uh, Steve Dunnicliffe through the CEO's office has been helping me I really appreciate that and, and uh, we're going to see what we can do to uh, kind of a last stand to see if we can come up with a plan or an idea to uh, save the facility. So thank you. So is that a motion? That motion to oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Supervisor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. There. Chair. Um, I want to thank Supervisor Pinches for his work on this because I think he saw, you know, some time ago that this was really a key economic development issue and a, a, a key issue not just for his district but for the whole county. So I don't know that we're going to be able to, um, given the whole ec the economic climate, uh, the the all of the various factors that sort of affect this. So I don't know that we're going to be able to uh, help and assist with something that's going to be successful, but I want to thank him for, for taking this on, and I think that the letter um, composed by council is, a, is an excellent one. So I'll, I just want to give him some thanks for that, because I think, you know, he's gone beyond what you would normally need to do, and he's trying to sort of be forward thinking and, and see if we can get a, a local solution going. Thank you. There was a motion by Pinches and seconded by Delbar uh, for approval of item 5-5. Five five. Further discussion? Okay. Call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Passes unanimously. I'm going to bypass item 24 till later today, try and get back on track here. And um, I'm going to take uh, item 6C up next. Uh, this presentation by and a discussion with our state legislative advocate, Mr. Don Peterson.
<clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Good members morning. of the board. Pleasure to be here. I think you have a um, a written copy of my report. Um, I'll try to cover the important points in the report and leave some time for some questioning. As I understand, you obviously have a very crowded agenda. <clears throat> the first item on my report is the 2008-2009 California state budget. Uh, as you're well aware, that budget passed twice uh, and was eventually signed by Governor Schwarzenegger after some very significant changes were made in the budget, uh, mostly having to do with the revenue sections and with the ability of the governor to reopen the budget and to reduce some of the expenditures should the revenue not come up to expectations. We can summarize that very easily. In the budget that was finally signed by Governor Schwarzenegger, we now see very few weeks after that signature was affixed, 